There is one absolutely horrifying part of today's story. It's the part where Angela is under the bed. And believe me, when you get to that part in the story, you'll know what I'm talking about. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all I do. And I upload three, four, even five times every week. And so if that's of interest to you, then the next time the like button asks you to go get them a regular ice cream, coffee, I want you to go to Starbucks and order a regular iced coffee, but with light ice. Then hand that sucker over to the fool that is the like button. Also, please subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Sunday, Curtis Myron, who was a New York City firefighter, was trapped on the fourth floor of an apartment in the Bronx, blazing inferno. He, along with five other firefighters, are trapped on the top floor. There was no way out, and they elected to jump from the fourth floor. And unfortunately, Curtis, along with another firefighter, did not survive the fall. In addition to those two lives that were lost, another fire had broken out separately in New York the same day that claimed the life of a third firefighter. This was the largest loss of life for the New York City Fire Department since the September 11th attacks. Curtis's wife, Jeanette, and their two daughters, Angela, who was a young teenager, and Deneen, who was a little bit younger than Angela, they were inconsolable. And they never thought that their father, their husband, would not come home again. But they were faced with this horrible new reality where dad wasn't coming home. The Black Sunday tragedy, the loss of those three firefighters, had become very high profile. And so news channels and media outlets were showing up at Jeanette property, hoping to get an interview with she or her kids about what had happened, and they were just not interested in that. And so they felt very trapped inside of the house. And the house itself had been built by Curtis. He had literally built the house. And so it was just a constant reminder of the sadness of this loss. And at some point, Jeanette just said to the girls, I think we should move. I think we just need a fresh start. This is too much. It's too much to be here. Let's just move. And the girls were very eager to leave. So Jeanette starts doing some house hunting, and quickly she finds this nice little house on Long Island where they live, but farther away from the city, and it was sitting on an acre of land, which for the price that was being asked for it, it was unheard of. They went to the property, and Jeanette could see that the house needed a ton of work. But all of Kurt's firefighter buddies were very eager to support Jeanette and her kids, and they offered to come by and actually help them do the renovations on the house. And so Jeanette bought the house, and very quickly, she and her two daughters moved in, and all of Kurt's firefighter buddies showed up and began this massive house renovation. I mean, they were basically tearing it down to the studs and rebuilding the whole house. Because of this massive renovation project, a lot of the doors and windows were not secured. And so at night, Jeanette felt really uncomfortable. So she went out and purchased seven cameras to fit on the outside of the house to monitor the property. And all of the cameras streamed to her laptop where she could watch them at any time. And so she found herself watching these cameras a lot on her laptop, just kind of reflexively watching what was happening around her property. And so one night, Jeanette's at her house, her kids are upstairs, and she's got her laptop open, and she's watching these, these feeds from the seven different cameras. And she admitted that it was just kind of fun to watch the cameras. It felt, you know, kind of cool to see what was going on outside, but from the safety of your home. And she was watching one particular feed that was showing the edge of her property where there was this big forest that basically butted up against their property, where there was a swing set in their driveway. And she was looking out at this big open front yard of theirs and from the tree line she watched a figure emerge in a, it looked like a man in a cloak walk up to their driveway and walk a little ways down the driveway before stopping and staring up at the house Jeanette was so caught off guard by what she was seeing that she didn't do anything she just stood there watching this figure and as soon as the figure had gotten there and was watching the house it turned back around and walked back into the woods and vanished it was late Jeanette didn't know what she'd even seen the cameras were not super HD so she thought it must have been an animal or it was just a an anomaly of the camera itself so at the same time that Jeanette is looking at her laptop and she's trying to make sense of this figure she's seen, upstairs the two girls are in their own bedrooms which are on other ends of the hallway. Angela was laying on her bed with her back up against the wall 
and she's reading a book and she starts hearing tapping along the same wall that her back is against and she can almost feel it in her back. She puts her book down and sits forward and turns and is listening really intently to where the tapping had been coming from. And then she hears bang, bang, bang. Like someone's trying to get her attention. She gets right out of her bed and goes to her door. She opens it up and looks downstairs because from where her door opened, she could look into the living room on the first floor and immediately she saw her mom on her laptop. Her mom was not banging on anything and her sister was in her room and she was down the hall and so that couldn't have been her sister. So she goes back in her room and she's thinking to herself, I'm, I'm here at things. She puts her ear right up against the wall and as soon as her ear makes contact with the wall, she said it sounded like someone smashed the wall right on the other side of her ear causes her to freak out and she goes right into her bed and throws the covers over her head and she hides. What Angela didn't know is that down the hall her younger sister Deneen had heard tapping as well but her tapping sounds were not coming from the wall they were coming from the door and she thought her mom had come upstairs to see what she was doing so she got up walked to the door opened it up and there was nothing. She did the same thing that Angela did and poked her head down and saw her mom sitting on the couch. She looked down the hall and she saw that Angela's door was closed it wasn't Angela. So she shuts the door and as soon as it shuts, she hears three distinct taps on the door. She opens it up again. There's no one there. She too runs into her bed and jumps under the covers. The girls would say in interviews that the tapping sounds continued periodically throughout most of the night, but at some point they both managed to fall asleep under the covers. The next morning, the girls go downstairs and they're in the kitchen and they tell each other what they had heard the night before. Then they both start feeding off of each other because they both have this experience and didn't realize it. Angela would say to Deneen, yeah, I heard these tapping sounds. Deneen is picking up on her fear and she's saying, I heard tapping sounds. And the kids are really wound up. And that's when Jeanette comes into the kitchen and she sees her kids talking about something that seems really intense. And she goes, what are you, what's going on? What are you talking about? And they said, mom, we think something's wrong with the house. We heard tapping sounds last night. This happened to me. This happened to me. And Jeanette just says, guys, it's a brand new house. We aren't used to the sounds the house makes. I'm sure it's just pipes or you know creaking floorboards or something. You guys are overthinking it. Don't worry about a thing. The house is fine. Over the following few days, some of the firemen that were helping renovate the house began to work on the basement. The basement was full of clutter. It was like whoever had lived there before had never taken anything out. Very old pieces of machinery and furniture and strange boxes and papers. And the first step to fixing the basement was just gonna be emptying it. And so the firemen were removing things from the basement when one of them, his name was Tom, he was one of Kurt's very good friends. Tom discovered that on the ground, Underneath all the clutter was this large pentagram, which is a five-pointed star inside of a circle that is almost always associated with satanic worship. Tom gets Jeanette to come downstairs and he shows her what's on the ground and he says, what do you want me to do about this? And Jeanette said, paint over it. I don't want my kids to see this. But what Jeanette didn't know is that the kids had actually been playing outside over the past couple of days out in that forest in their property and they had found a number of pentagrams carved into trees, into rocks carved into the dirt on the ground they were everywhere they decided not to tell their mom because they didn't want their mom to worry so they're both siloing information about these pentagrams all over their property a couple of days later angela was going to be home alone for a few hours and Jeanette had given angela some chores which included cleaning out the refrigerator and so angela's in the kitchen and she's got the fridge open and she's taking things out and cleaning off each of the different drawers and she can't help but feel like someone is standing behind her she kept turning around and no one was standing in the kitchen, but she just could not shake this feeling that someone was behind her. And so she's looking at the fridge at one point, and she's about to just give up on cleaning the fridge and explain to her mom that she would just do it later, when all of a sudden she hears behind her this loud, like, explosion. She hears pots and pans and knives and forks clattering all over the ground, and she instantly turns around, and every cabinet, every drawer has come flying open, and all of their contents have come smashing onto the floor. She sprints up to her bedroom screaming and hides in the corner. Shortly thereafter, Jeanette comes home, she goes inside and she sees the kitchen is an absolute mess. It looks like someone had broken in and she starts screaming for Angela, thinking the worst. Someone's broken in. What happened to my daughter? She's running upstairs screaming for Angela and she finds Angela curled up 
up in the corner of her bedroom. And what's going on? What happened in the kitchen? And Angela just could not put an answer together. She was so shocked by what happened. So Jeanette tells her to stay here. She runs around the house, making sure that no one's there. She gets her laptop, goes back to Angela, opens it up, and she checks the footage. No one's in their house. No one's been near their house. All the while, Angela's just sobbing hysterically. And finally, after Jeanette is convinced that there has not been a home invasion, she turns to Angela and she's like, what is going on? Why does the kitchen look like this? And Angela tried to explain what happened, but it just didn't make any sense. And so Jeanette was getting frustrated with Angela and saying, did you do that down in the kitchen? But when Angela didn't change her story and just looked terrified, Jeanette started to see that Angela wasn't lying. This incident really rattled Angela, and Jeanette would comment in different interviews that it was at this point that Angela began to withdraw quite a bit. She was really upset about what had happened in the kitchen, but there wasn't really a good way to handle it, and so Jeanette didn't know what to say to her daughter. Angela didn't know how to talk about it, and so it was just this awful cloud in their life that they had this really intense thing happen, but there's just no explanation for it. A couple of days after the kitchen incident and the crew that had been clearing out the basement got to the point where they were ready to actually start tearing down drywall. And so as they start demoing the walls, they find hidden in the walls a journal. And it's this very old looking journal with some lace wrapped around it. And one of the firemen gives it to Jeanette and just says, hey, you know, I thought you might want to look at this. I don't know what to make of it, but it was in your wall. Jeanette opened it up and she began flipping through it and she saw a date that was 1927. And she knew that was actually the date that this house was actually built. It seemed like this was a journal written by someone named Christina, who seemed fairly young. And as she's flipping through this journal, it, it really starts to take a dark turn when she sees diagrams of these ritualistic sacrifices of animals and of people that apparently were taking place in this house because the diagram clearly indicated that it was happening in the basement and even weirder is there was this room that they didn't know what it was for in the basement that was underneath the stairs that it wasn't really a closet it was all cement on all four sides it was like someone had put a a pocket of cement underneath the stairs and they always wonder what it was and some of the diagrams indicated that some of the sacrificing was going on underneath the stairs in in that room. Jeanette decides to keep the journal from her kids. She does not want them to know that this was found in the walls. A couple of days later, Angela is in her bedroom listening to music on her headphones, and at some point she thinks she hears someone call her name. She takes her headphones out, she goes to the door, opens up, looks down, and says, hey mom, did you call me? And her mom's like, no. She looks down the hall and she can hear that her sister is showering in the bathroom at the end of the hall, so it wasn't her. And so, you know, Angela, she has a healthy fear of this house because of really the kitchen incident more than anything else. But she's thinking, okay, I must have heard something, not a big deal. So she goes back into her room and she sits down in her bed, but before putting her headphones back in, she hears someone say, get Denise. And it's coming from in the walls. Immediately, she's terrified. Down the hall, she hears Denine, who's in the shower, screaming bloody murder. Angela starts running to the bathroom to see what's going on with Denine, right as Jeanette is flying up the stairs to go see what's going on with Denine. They open up the door, and Denine is huddled on the ground, screaming about some person in the bathroom with her. And she kept turning around, and no one was there. Jeanette would say when she saw her daughter, she looked so scared, she thought she was having a seizure. And Jeanette immediately grabs a towel, scoops up her daughter, she grabs Angela, and they leave the bathroom. They go running into Jeanette's room, and they get into Jeanette's bed, and they're all huddled there, and Jeanette's trying to ask Deneen what she saw. And so Deneen finally says that she was in the shower, and she heard someone saying her name, and it sounded like a male voice. And she's just looking through the frosted glass, and all of a sudden she sees a big hand land on the outside of the shower door. Jeanette felt so helpless. She had lost her husband, her kids have lost their father and there's all these strange things happening in the house and Jeanette just felt like she couldn't protect them. It was around this time that Jeanette really felt like she should leave the house. But financially, they were really invested into this house so it would have been very difficult to leave just financially. And then also, the amount of time and energy all the firefighters, all of Kurt's friends had put in to renovating the house and you know gutting it and fixing it up. It was so much time and energy that she felt like she would be letting them down if she left. And she couldn't possibly tell them that the reason that she was leaving is because the house is haunted. And so she just felt trapped. A couple of days go by and everybody is just on edge in the house. Angela, Denise, Jeanette, they don't like being there. And Angela just felt really cooped up when she she was home and she was just scared of being in the house and so 
one night she decides to go outside and just swing on their swing which was on their front property Jeanette is inside the house doing dishes where there's a window that looks out the front of the house where you can see this swing set when she finishes doing the dishes she takes her eye off of Angela for a moment and she walks into the other room to sit down on the couch she grabs her laptop she opens it up and figures she can keep an eye on Angela using the security camera that was pointing in that direction so she opens up the program and she pulls up all the camera feeds and she's shocked when on the camera feed with Angela she sees the same cloaked figure she had seen the first time she had been looking at the live feeds standing right behind Angela immediately she's up and sprinting outside screaming for Angela as soon as she gets outside she hears Angela screaming for her mother before she's even seen her mother and when she turns the corner she sees Angela screaming in pain on the ground in front of the swing and there's there's no cloaked figure anywhere she runs over and she can see that Angela's ankle has been badly broken or dislocated and so she scoops her up and she said what happened and Angela said that somebody pushed me someone pushed me off the swing and they go to the hospital and sure enough she dislocated and broken her ankle when they got home that night Jeanette opened up the laptop and reviewed the footage from outside and she saw this figure walk out of the woods and the swing was right up against the woods and it goes right behind Angela and appears to push Angela and then goes back into the woods Jeanette called the police she showed them the footage and they feel really bad and they, they can clearly see what happened but there's no way to identify the figure that came out of the tree line they just told them to be careful don't go in your woods and if you see this figure again in any of your camera feeds call us right away and we'll come right over and we'll do what we can so at this point Jeanette is terrified she can't protect her kids and she doesn't leave them really at any point she's 24 7 in the same room with her kids they're sleeping in the same room and the only time she would leave them is during the day for very brief stints and on one day a couple of days after the swing incident Jeanette needed to go to the pharmacy and so Angela is going to be alone for about an hour and a half and so her mom leaves and Angela is in her bedroom and she's sitting on her bed and she's listening to music at some point she thinks she hears banging coming from somewhere in her room now at this point Angela has been pretty shaken up after living here she had the incident in the kitchen where everything flew out of the drawers and cupboards. She's been hearing tapping and banging sounds. She has her sister's story about the hand on the glass in the shower. She just got pushed off a swing by some cloaked figure. I mean, she's scared of this place. And so every sound is going to terrify her. And when she started hearing that tapping sound, she took out her headphones. She looks over at her closet and she can see that the doors are rattling. She is so immediately scared that she gets off of the bed and goes underneath and tucks up against the side of the wall. She could actually see the bottom of the closet and she can see it's still rattling and she's tucked up against the wall. And as she's looking, the doors slowly slide open and she sees a figure walk out of her closet that must have been standing there the whole time that she'd been laying on her bed. She said this horrible smell filled the room and she said that it looked like it had human feet, bare feet, but it was a totally dark figure. It was hard to really pick out if it looked human or not, but it began walking around her room and she believed it was looking for her and she heard its footsteps as it walked all over her room. And at some point it walks into the hall out of her bedroom. And she's just laying there under her bed, hoping that it doesn't come back. And then when she thinks it's walked all the way downstairs, it goes quiet. And then she hears it running up the stairs, running into her bedroom, runs right in front of the bed. Its feet are aimed right at her. It climbs onto her bed. She can hear the springs condensing right above her. And she's looking out wide-eyed, holding her mouth. And all of a sudden, its head appears looking down directly at her. And it's this dark face, sunken eyes. It looks like its skin is rotting off of its head. And it's just staring at her upside down, looking directly at her. At this point, she screams and the figure goes back up onto the bed and now it's sitting right above her. She's screaming uncontrollably and then she hears it get off the bed, but she doesn't know where it went in the room. And so for the next 45 minutes, she lays there expecting this thing to come back. It knows where she is. It knows she's under the bed and she can hear it occasionally running around the house. She can just smell this horrible smell. And at some point she hears her mom's car outside and she starts screaming for her mother. Her mother must have heard 
hurt her because she comes bombing into the house. She runs up the stairs. She's screaming for Angela. Angela is screaming for her mom. And then she finally finds Angela under the bed. She pulls her out. She holds her. And she's trying to figure out what's going on. And Angela's saying that he's in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. I don't know what it is. He came out of my closet. Jeanette runs all through the house looking for anything or anyone in the house. There's nothing. It's gone. At this point, Jeanette is at her wit's end. She doesn't know what to do. So she takes Angela. She gets in the car. They drive to where Deneen is. Deneen was with a friend at the time. They get Deneen. So the three of them are together now. And they drive to Jeanette's parents' house. And while they're there, Jeanette calls a paranormal investigator. And she says, I need your help. I, I need help to get rid of what's going on in my house. And so she gets in touch with this woman named Liz, who offers to do a cleansing of the house. And after the cleansing was done, Jeanette would say that it appeared that everything stopped in the house. And somewhat unbelievably, Jeanette and Angela and Deneen decided to stay in the house, in the house where this demon was. That they felt confident that the cleansing had gotten rid of it. And to this day, they still live there. If it was me, I would have been out of that house and never gone back. So I'd love to get your reaction to this story. Do you think there was some paranormal entity that was haunting them in the house? Or do you think this is just a product of extreme grief and anxiety as a result of the death of their husband and father? Or is it something else? Let me know what your theory is in the comments and I will do my best to get back to as many of you as I possibly can. If you enjoyed this video, then the next time the like button asks you to get them a regular iced coffee, go to Starbucks and get an iced coffee, but ask for light ice. And then hand that joke of a drink to the fool that is the like button. Also, please subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly three to four, even five video uploads I do every week. If you have a story submission, we have a subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below. You can post your story there. And if I intentionally use one of your suggestions, I will absolutely credit you. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram. My username is John Ballin 416 I also have a Twitter account that I really just started using and my handle is John Ballin 416 over there as well. I'm also very active on TikTok where my handle is Mr. Ballin. So whether I see you on Instagram, Reddit, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, some combination of those. I'm just very thankful for your support. And until next time, guys, that's going to do it. See ya.